you've had one workshop in Texas and another one Pennsylvania or something like that? No, I have. I just had a workshop here in Texas on the weekend. Uh huh. I saw just that. Just finished. Uh huh. And uh, the next one is coming up in um, Minnesota. Oh, okay. Minia Minneapolis. Uh huh. So that's in o October. Oh, okay. Okay. So Do you I'll find that this? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'll be gone most of October because I want to drive. Well, I got into an art festival up there too, like the weekend before, mm -hmm. to try to make more use of the trip. And so, right. man, that's going to be a, that's going to be a, a, a real busy week <laughs> getting, because the first weekend of October is the October fest, <clears throat> excuse me, October fest in Fredericksburg, Texas here. And then as soon as I get back, like I'll get back Sunday night. I'll have to unload the truck from all the caricature stuff because that's caricatures that I do there. Ooh, uh -huh. And then Monday morning, I gotta load everything I need for the art festival in Minnesota and the workshop because it's gonna take four days to drive there. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I could do it in three if I really push, but I don't like driving more than five hours a day. If I no. drive five hours a day, I can get there in four days. It's exhausting. Yeah. Driving is exhausting. I think driving you're wise. is tiring. But I like to, I like to like see where I'm going to go in the first five hours and where can I uh -huh. go to a park? I, I try to find a hotel that's near something that I can get up in the morning and walk or go see something, you know, go to a zoo maybe or something. And so that's how I, I do my trips that way. Oh, how nice. nice. Well, you'll have to come to one of the um, art festivals in Colorado. Uh, they have that um, one in Denver and it's huge. I haven't, it's been a, quite a few years since they've been there. And then they, in Golden, they have a uh, nice art festival. Yeah, I don't think I've done it in Colorado. Oh, what? what's the, it'd be what's nice. What's the very best one? Uh, like probably the Denver rated. one. There's one in the Denver. The Denver one. I, yeah, I'll have to find the name of that. I just can't remember it right now, but I'll, I'll message it to you. And that's the best. And they get a lot of traffic down there. I mean, a lot. We're talking, you know, Denver and, Denver has a lot of people, so that one would be a, a nice one to come to. Yeah, it remains to be seen. Like this year is going to be like my my thermometer, so to speak, as far as gauging the gauging whether or not I want to continue to do events like this. Yeah, where I have to load everything up and drive and stay in a hotel and spend a lot of money to make who knows how much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, you know, I'm surprised that Terry Ludwig, I know that he said he's a friend of yours, right? Uh, I've met him. Oh, I call I, him an acquaintance. I'm, oh, I wish he'd sponsor a, an art class for you in Denver. That would be cool. You know, it would. It would. So Ludwig Pastels are in Denver? Is that where they're based? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Most of them, I think, are in Denver. Yeah. Um, the past, well, you know, the Pastel Society has quite a few members <laughs> and um yeah. i've actually got a book so it would be nice it would be nice they just had lorenzo chavez yeah. at uh, the pastel and then um he judged some show in littleton and i went to the show because my friend's painting was in it and uh he was there too and i've met him once before and he's just such a nice man he is so i took I, his workshop I at iaps did you it's really nice yeah, I took this one day, what? one day workshop at the Pastel Convention. Oh, nice! How nice! Have you ever met um, Richard McKinley? Oh yeah, I've took taken two, two, at least oh. two workshops from him. Yeah, he he does beautiful work too. He's one of the best Doug, instructors I've ever met. Really? Okay, okay, that's good to know. Exactly yeah. what you said. Desmond O'Hagan was a really good one, also. Was he? Yeah. Oh, there's so many. Um, a new one that caught my attention is, is his last name Paco or something like that. Uh, Pic uh, yeah, Elaine Picard. Picard? No, Picard. Uh, uh, Alan. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh huh. He looks interesting too. I don't know what kind of um, workshop he would give. Now I don't know if his is his last name Picard. It just. I don't think it was the same. For some reason, the same last name as yeah, that Star Trek captain. That just doesn't sound right. Oh, okay. 
I thought it was something <laughs> like P O U L T. I don't know. But he was up at uh, the Pastel Society in Denver. Is he the one that does the gorgeous portraits? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw him do a demo at IAPS, it and it was just oh. amazing <laughs> to watch. It was amazing to watch him, how it just oh. develops. You know, he's another one that works all around and, and until the whole thing comes together. Well, that would be fascinating to watch. Yeah. It, but you, you, work, you work all around, and it finally comes together, right? Yeah, I try. <laughs> Well, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a Q and A. See, I was thinking I was gonna just whip this one out really quick and then like demonstrate some some portrait stuff. Oh, you know what? There's something. There is something about the shape of that nose. The shape of the nose is uh is straighter over here and longer. And believe it or not, it might actually be, it might actually be larger from here up. Because this side, the actual shape of the nose, try something. This is, uh, it's an inch and an eighth wide. and one inch high. So it's only slightly wider than it is tall. Two quarters. Yeah, well, I've got that, I've got that right now, I think. I'm not sure if I have the terminology right, but sometime could you show something I'm foreshadowing when, when you have a foreshortening you mean or foreshortening yeah that's kind of what this this whole muzzle is doing right right and uh, i'd just like to um have the technique behind that well honestly the i mean there are like all right let me let me try something here foreshortening is i mean the concept the concept of foreshortening is based on like one point perspective. Perspective and foreshortening are kind of same things. Um, so, you know, like you have a horizon, you have your distant point, and you have a building over here. You know, if it, let me first, okay, in this box first, I'm going to draw a building. Here's a building. <laughs> Here's a building from the front, from the front. So if you're drawing that building on a street and you're stand, you're not standing in front of it, you're standing way over here, then you have uh -huh. foreshortening, which is kind of the same thing as perspective. And when you have point perspective, everything, all the horizontal lines, horizontal lines all converge on that point. So you have, you know, you're standing here, actually, if it's a tall building, the bottom of it would be like this. And here's the front of the building. Even this and all of the windows would be angled to, I mean, this is like really simplified. And, and then there's the side of the building. The side of the building is still face, then facing you. But this is an example of foreshortening. So, um, and it's almost like any, any way you look at a person, you're going to have foreshortening. Um, because you can't flatten out a face. A face is not flat. It's got ins and outs. <laughs> so, you know, for instance, like, okay, the flattest way that you can draw a nose, here are some eyes. 
And if a person is looking right at you, they have a nose. And their nose is, uh... Let's say their nose is like this. This is just a simple line drawing of a nose. Right? So, if you have this person and you say, tilt your head back, when they tilt their head back, then these things, okay, if we draw this person in profile, if we draw this person in profile, then they have this eye, it's looking something like this, and bridge of the nose, and then the bottom of the nose is here. And then the nostril and the side of the nose like this. So you have these lines. These are all on these lines, right? Well, if you, if you tell them to tilt their head back, then what happens is that the nose is now like this. Okay, if there's a, there's that. And the eye is like this. Okay. So there's somebody tilting their head back from the side. So what uh -huh. does that look like from the front? If you think about that, uh -huh. you've got the eyes and then the nose here and then the nostrils are really going to be open. So you have the eyes will look different because this this bottom lid, you're not seeing like this shape anymore. You're seeing more of this shape. It's next to the skull because of that. I probably sound stupid. I'm so sorry. Well, it'd be easier for me if I had a model trying to just make this up but the nose the, the nose is like here uh-huh and the the nostrils are like okay i i see what you're saying up like yeah. this uh-huh and you can really see into the nose because you see this much of the nostril right here from there uh -huh. to there you see it open uh huh. So that's like foreshortening. That's an example. Okay. But honestly, I don't think of it that way because okay. <laughs> I don't... when I'm Just... when you're working from if I'm working from a photo, this is a two dimensional uh -huh. surface. It's a two dimensional image. Sure, sure. So all you I... have to do is see distances and angles and lines and shapes on a flat surface. Okay. And then you have then you have to translate that onto another flat surface, uh -huh. which is easy. And photos are easy because they don't move. But <laughs> yeah. um, with enough drawing practice from photos, I mean, this is kind of backwards. <laughs> if you draw from life, if you're drawing a moving target from life, that's that is difficult because it keeps moving. Um, like a person that's sitting for a portrait might move, you know, the, they, might, they might start off like this. And you're like, okay, well, that's fine. You know, their nose is here in this shape, and you see this much of the nostrils, and, and then it's this far from the mouth. And you can say, okay, stop, stop, stalk, stop, stop talking now while I draw your mouth. <laughs> but... You know, the way people are, unless they're professional models, and sometimes even the professionals, you'll start off with the portrait, and then 20 minutes later, the head is like this. You know? Yeah. And so, and so you're like, well, my drawing doesn't look right now because the nose is farther to the right. And, the you know, if you drop your vertical line down along this the side of the nose, then, then you're like into the pupil of the eye. And, uh -huh. you know, so those things can change. But... Okay. If you have a subject that sits still, like a still life, or a person that can sit still without moving, 
there there are some out there <laughs> then all you do is you're looking at it from this viewpoint and it's no different than a two-dimensional image on paper okay you have Makes to make sense. these judgments how much of this do you see like this shadow uh -huh. how what's the distance between here and here uh -huh. how, how wide is that from here to here what's the distance from there to here you know you can you can drop vertical lines just to make judgments you know like the the side of my nose comes uh -huh. to where on the mouth you know the, the mouth comes to where and okay. in a portrait there are like generics you know, like this is a generic nose and mouth and eyes this is a generic nose and eyes um you know the the you can look at, I mean, on, on, online has just tons of, tons of examples of charts okay. for like how to draw a portrait or whatever. Um, some are better than others. Uh, personally, I like the ones that are based on some of the old masters drawings. Okay. Because they'll be drawn better. <laughs> uh, there's some really good books too, actually. The, the Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards is... I always recommend that. Okay. I never read that until I was done with college. <laughs> and then when I read it, I was like, oh my God, this is what my high school teacher was trying to get us to do. And my college teachers were trying to get us to do this in life drawing class. But they never told us why. Uh -huh. <laughs> this book tells you why that works why you should be drawing in certain ways, certain little exercises, certain methods. I'll get this. I'll get this. You know, I started playing with this stuff when I was 50. And I've taken figure drawing class, you name it. But not enough of anything. Do you know what I mean? It's just hit and miss. Yeah. So I highly I recommend picking up on something, whatever it is, and doing just that for like okay. several months. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, not just that and not anything else, but you know, do, like, like if you want to improve your drawing ability, keep a sketchbook. Okay. Do a drawing every single day. And I tell I, you, I, yeah, a, I have to a do drawing that. a day okay. is a lot yeah. easier than a painting a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because drawings don't take as long. Okay, makes sense. I, I really have to work on my drawing skills. And you're right, you know, I've told Wayne, well, I'm gonna paint every day for two hours, but if I sketch and I can get that better, then I'm better off with everything. Mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you so oh, yeah. much. Yeah, like uh, when, I'm, when I'm on the road in October, I was thinking, you know, I won't be able to post much. You know, I won't be painting. I, I hardly ever paint, well, like, I, I tell myself before I go that, oh, I could do, I could stop and do some plain air, you know, it never happens. <laughs> so this time I was thinking, why don't I just do a drawing? Like I came across somebody's Instagram page one time somewhere and they were in, they did a lot of food paintings, like with watercolor, with like those brushes that hold the water in the br inside the brush, you know, you fill it with water and then you can just like paint. They were doing these little like, pen and ink and water coloring with watercolor their food on their that was on their table at, at a restaurant and I thought oh my gosh that is so that is so cool you know it's like yeah. I don't know if I would do that I'd be too you know I'd take a picture of it and then draw it but <laughs> but you know there's so much stuff that you can draw like anything you know like in a hotel room I could draw the lamp on the table or I could do a self portrait in the mirror uh -huh. or, you know, I could pull something out of my purse and draw it. I could draw the coffee mug or maybe make some tea and draw the tea mug with the, with the string and the tab, uh -huh. of the tea bag hanging out of it. Yeah. Or, you know, anything and drawings like that. You know, it's like 15 minutes, you know, it's just like sketch, a little bit of shading, you know, Yeah. but 
But it'd be something to post, you know, while I'm while I'm not here. Yeah. <laughs> I can't edit any videos or anything. <laughs> but I will do that. That's a very good suggestion. I just feel, you know, I stopped painting for and drawing for about four years, and I, I lost a lot of stuff. So it's trying to regain some of the knowledge that I had before. So thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. your time. And you know what I, you know what I recommend as far as sketching, drawing and sketching in a sketchbook, is I recommend using a ballpoint pen. Really? Okay. Because you can't erase. And <laughs> don't use a felt point pen, or or one of those roll point pens. Those like those are too smooth. The uh -huh. ballpoint, the old fashioned ballpoint pen, you can actually get like scuffly sort of lines if you move it really fast. Uh -huh. Or you can go That's over, true. you know, if you want to make something darker, you just go over it, you know. And, but my friends, uh, was actually, you know, and I, I was thinking about him because I just, I just connected with him on LinkedIn. <laughs> His name is Fred Harper, and he lives in New York somewhere now. But um, he was a caricature artist when I started up at Cedar Point as a portrait artist, and he was the first caricature artist I ever worked with, like when my manager allowed me to do caricatures, he put me with Fred, which was horribly intimidating because Fred is just a natural. He, he, he's a caricaturist to this day. It does, he does like magazine covers. But um, he was the first person I ever met, and even to this day, the only person I've ever met that carries around like four or five sketchbooks. He would carry them around in his backpack everywhere. He'd go to take okay. his lunch break and we'd all sit down on our lunch break in the cafeteria and he'd pull out a sketchbook, start drawing people or start drawing stuff. He could like make stuff up, like bodies. Really? That's why he was so good with the caricatures. He'd do bodies like the first day that I worked with him. He did one the couple that he did their caricature and they wanted to be ice skating. And so I watched him draw this body and the guy was like, the guy was like this holding her up and the girl was like this, like with her <laughs> arms out and her foot and like, and all these bodies were like perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, how do you do that? But he, he would draw all the time. And I remember oh. that somebody once told him, somebody once told him that his hand, like his hands didn't look right in something he drew. And so for about a month after that, all he drew was hands. He just drew hands. Because <laughs> he wanted to improve. And that's what you're saying. Concentrate on something. And that's that another you're... thing you can you can okay. try. If you don't have anything else to draw, you know your hand. Hold a pencil. And draw your hand draw your hand holding a pencil. Uh -huh. Or draw your hand in a fist. Or draw your hand with, you know, like doing this or doing this or, you know. A flat hand like this, that's the hardest, actually. That's the hardest. It's easier when you've got like some some positioning going on where you can have light shadow uh -huh. and stuff but hey well thank you so much i appreciate anyway, the tips yeah you've been trying to you've been trying to say good night for a while i've been going on and on Who? no no I <laughs> <laughs> no no so, this is important and i really i feel so discouraged sometimes to the point of wanting to cry but i'm not going to get down <laughs> no nah. nah. but th thank you so much sure you're an inspiration to me. Oh, well, thank you. Well, that's true. But well, I Barbara, I hope you're getting a lot out of this too. And I'm sorry your your microphone or whatever it was is too choppy. But um, I'm going to say good night and call this one. Good night. Well, thank you so much, and you have a good evening. What's left yeah, of it? You too. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we'll see you later then. Thank you. Okay. Night. Night. Bye, Barbara. Bye, Barbara. <laughs>